going on guys? Tom Davis here. I am in Phoenix, Arizona. And today I'm going to teach you how to safely, properly introduce the recall using the remote collar. Let's get it. The reason why I'm making this video is because a lot of people go out and they buy a remote collar and they get a cheap one that they don't really know how to use and they try to put it on their dog and they really do more damage than good. I mean, what happens is, is dogs just don't understand it, then they're off leash. And when I mean damage, that means that the dog is just off leash and uncontrolled and doesn't know how to respond to the e-collar and that's dangerous. I wanna make sure you guys know fundamentally how this is supposed to work when you're just teaching the recall. There's so many different things and I have a ton of videos on how to introduce the recall universally throughout your whole dog training uh, life with your dog, which is what we're gonna talk about uh, in, in all the other videos that I do. But in today's episode, we're gonna keep it simple and clean so you guys can get your e-collar at home. And if it's something you're gonna do, I want you to do it right. So let's get into it. So all you guys need to start this, what I'm using right now is a Dogtra 280C, which is, Dogtra is the company, the 280C is the model. 30 foot long line, 15 foot long line, 20 foot long line, something that you can navigate him because this is the introduction stage. He's not gonna be off leash. So I need to make sure that I can give him some sort of pressure with the leash to guide him and navigate him through. The other thing that I'm gonna be using is the Dogtra sound box, which every single time that I use the remote collar, you guys are gonna know when uh, the e-collar goes off because timing is really key. And the other thing I'm using is a bag full of treats. I like to use beef liver treats because dogs love them. So in a perfect world, you guys are gonna to wanna to be introducing this uh, with not a lot going on. Maybe a, a room where there's nothing in there. You got your treats, you got your e-collar, you got your long line, but dog training isn't perfect. We're never gonna be in a perfect scenario. I'm training him in his driveway with not a lot going on first thing in the morning. So we're gonna let him out and I'm not gonna hold the, the leash or anything uh, because he's pretty responsive to verbal cues in the first place. I'm just gonna start associating that low level stimulation. Benny, come. Yes, good boy, good come, sit. Yes, good, good man, break. Make it fun, this is fun. So when the e-collar goes off to the dog, he feels that stimulation, I pair it with hey come, he comes to me and then it shuts off. It's a classic form of escape training. This is not a correction, this is not a punishment, this does not hurt the dog. All it does is gets his attention from a distance without actually physically touching him, which is brilliant because we're using modern technology to train our dogs off leash which is wonderful, huge advantage. So we're gonna do this again. Benny, come. Yes, good come, well done. Sit, good. Benny, come. Yes, good come, well done. Good boy, sit, yes. So that was an out of sight recall, which was brilliant. Um, and, and again, if you have a dog that's already pretty responsive to your verbals, all you're doing is tagging this in. One thing a lot of people do and they make the mistake of is they will actually put their dog in like a sit stay and then they try to do the recall, which is not suggested because that's unrealistic as ever. You want to make sure he's out, he's getting into stuff, he's doing whatever he wants, and then we're going to work on recall that way. Benny, come. Yes. Good come, buddy. Sit. Yes. Good boy, good me. So a couple frequently asked questions, guys, is when to actually hit the remote. At the same time, you ask your dog to do something. Say their name, hold continuous, and then the, uh, the dog will respond to you accordingly. So there's two different functions here on the dog Dogtra 280C. So there's a nick, and then there's a continuous. It's very simple. The nick means that you're just nicking the dog, you just tap like this. Even if you hold it, it only goes once, and continuous is exactly how it sounds. You hold the button down until you release your finger. So that's what I'm doing with recall. He's over here, he's doing his thing, he's sniffing the garage, he's sniffing flowers, whatever, scorpions maybe. And then I tell him to come, and then he commits, and he says, okay, I'm gonna commit to you instead of what I'm doing. And then I release the pressure. Classic form of escape training. What I wanna do is stay over here, like where it's easy and then transfer to the grass. So I'll have you do it. Here, so you can do it for me too. So, Benny, come. Yes, good boy. Sit. Good, and I'm gonna draw him in just a little, suck him in a little bit more. Benny, come. Good, sit. Yes, good. Good man. Break. Go ahead and try it, Justin. Benny, come. Good. good. So now we're gonna go kind of like to the phase two. And again, he's been pretty conditioned. Uh, Benny, come. Yes, good boy, good come. Yes, good boy, sit. Good, so we just recalled him off of uh, this gentleman over here that's doing landscaping. Really, really, really good. And then we're paying him, of course, because that was brilliant. After you guys have done this for a couple days and you're familiarizing yourself and just take, everyone rushes, rushes, rushes. They want to see something right now. Don't do that. 
take your time. Don't buy an e-collar and go out and just slap it on because you're going to hiking for the weekend or camping or the beach or whatever. Just take your time to introduce this thoroughly in the beginning so you can sustainably use it forever and it's great. Benny, come. Yes, good come. Good, so just using that nick, same time. Benny, come. Yes, good come. You guys can do this in the morning with, your, with this kibble. Half a cup, come out with 25 pieces of kibble. Really close, Benny, come. Yes, good come. Benny, come. Yes, and then, right, so you call him right now. Benny, come. Good come. Good nice. So, let me show you how to size it. Benny, come. Yes, buddy, good come. Sit. Yes. Just put it right on the side of his neck. So keep it nice and tight, right against the skin. And then is it gonna sit underneath or is it gonna sit nope. on the sides? Good question, right on the side. Okay. You want it right on the side. This is where the area, like this is the biggest part of the dog's neck. Up here's like his spine and down here's his throat. Exactly. Keep it right on the side. Okay, buddy. Rick, when you're doing the nick, because some dogs, like I was saying before, like the continuous, they're like, they, they stop to figure out what you want. So you say their name and they're like, hey, I'm gonna come to you. And then they're like, wait, what do, I, what do I do with this? I'm not, and he's in the stages of, you know? So if you just do the nick, Benny, come, tap. Some dogs get, they respond better to that. It kind of accelerates them. Some dogs with the continuous, they kind of shut down a little bit. Come. Good, Good. now give him a break. Good. That's, that would be your morning session. That's it. You're like, hey, do you get it? Okay, good, just making sure you're still sharp. That's it. But what I would do in the next three days, or I'm sorry, in the next two weeks, is do that three times a day. Recall to you, good come, come, done. Put him in a sit. Good job, Benny. Good man, Benny. You're so good, you're doing so good. Good, yes. All right, you guys, so now that we have Benny in a really good spot, you guys have the information that you need to do it right. And that's really why I made this video because I, the e-collar has, has, I think it's really overwhelming for a lot of dog owners and there's a lot of misinformation out there. You guys just saw when I came to Phoenix, his owner was like, I need him to come off leash. And for me, I love dogs so much and I want to do what's best for the dog and the owner and to responsibly, humanely be able to use something that can actually reach out and communicate with the dog completely wireless, I have found to be the best, most effective, most efficient way to do that. So he's at a good point. If you guys have questions, I highly recommend hiring a dog trainer in your area that is comfortable using the remote collar that can help you establish uh, your e-collar basics, as well as going through all the videos on YouTube from people who are professionally trained using the remote collar in the way that I just introduced it. But again, I wanted to make this video just to let you guys know, to let anybody know, the e-collar is not this scary, shocking, mythological, crazy thing, abusive thing at all. As you guys saw, this dog is now as happy as he can be running around in the acres that he has and his owners can now go to the beach and other places like that and travel with him and have him responsibly off leash. Just because we care, we need to be able to communicate. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video. I really, really do. I hope that it was insightful for you. I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't yet, do me a solid favor, you guys like this video, smash that subscribe button. We put videos out like this every single week, sometimes twice a week. I appreciate you guys again. I will talk to you next time. Peace. Okay, come on, break.